Hello and welcome to the Airport Domain Session as part of the Building Smart International Standard Summit uh, Lillistrom 2023. Thank you for joining. My name is Laura and I will be your moderator today. Today's session is titled Airport Project Entity Update. Uh, the speaker for this session are shown on the screen. Uh, the session is scheduled to last uh, 90 minutes, including the time for question at the end. The session is being recorded and will be made available in the replay session of the event as soon as possible. Before I hand over to the speaker, I would like to remind you that this is an hybrid event. For online attendees, your microphone will remain muted for the duration of this session. And if you wish to make a comment or ask a question, please use the chat box in the control panel. For the attendees uh, here in the room, please keep the background noise to a minimum. And if you wish to make comments or ask a question, please raise your hand and use a microphone. I would also uh, like to bring your attention that Building Smart is committed to ensuring that participation in the development of Sundar is unrestricted and the process uh, for the adoption is transparent and standards that develop do not favor any particular provider and are open, non-binding and accessible to Please take note of our antitrust code of conduct. Um, and now I would like to um, hand over to others. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, we're going to give another update on the airport entities project, which we've been doing for a couple of years now. Um, and so for this presentation, we were actually wondering what, what's the update that we're going to give you. We have been working very hard, but we've had the summer vacation. So a lot of people were on holiday. Um, and so we haven't really been able to meet uh, as much as what we, what we would usually do before one of the summits. Um, so we kind of looked at the presentation and uh, did not want to repeat a lot of the slides that we've been repeating for the last couple of years, literally, I think two years now. Uh, so we actually went back to some of the slide decks that we made in the beginning, <coughs> grabbed some of those slides uh, to kind of go back to why are we doing this project? What is the importance of this project? And how can we get more airports um, involved and get more input from people working for airports? Uh, so we'll start with that and then we'll uh, hand it over to Christopher and Maya for a little bit more detail on the progress that we have made so far because we, we have been working. We have made some uh, pretty cool uh, progress for, um, for the project. So who's been working on uh, the airport entities um, project, the working group? Um, well, obviously we know Maya and Christophe, we're all here. Um, Mike is not here today. He's been working uh, since the beginning of, on the project as well. Um, as well as Carl Fitzpatrick from Auckland Airport. Um, he's been involved and in delivering very valuable input since the beginning. And um, very recently, Gianluca actually joins. Uh, so we've been bringing him up to speed um, of what we've been doing, why we've been doing the things that we're doing. Um, so hopefully soon he'll be able to deliver valuable input as well. So just a few facts about the Airport Entities Working Group um, is that we started uh, this project back in May of 2020. The project was introduced actually by Alex, who's in the room right now uh, before that, um, but a lot has changed over the years. So we actually had to reintroduce the topic um, and also make some changes to um, the Airport Entities Project. Um, meaning that I think when Alex started, they were actually looking at extending the IUC schema um, and now that the BSDD um, is doing what it's supposed to do, uh, we decided to actually extend it through the Building Smart Data Dictionary instead of waiting on a new version of IFC. And so in August of 2020, uh, we actually started our first meetings with the working group that you just saw on the screen. We meet every Monday for one hour. Um, so we have a total of 52 meetings a year. Um, and everything we do uh, besides that one hour meeting is uh, basically volunteer. A so we do a lot of it in our own time on the weekends, a lot of emailing back and forth um, between uh, the weekly meetings. Um, so we're still uh, looking at minimal to no funding. Um, so it's not moving as quickly as what we would like, mm -hmm. um, but it is moving and we are making progress. Um, and I think the work that we've been doing has been pretty cool, pretty exciting. <laughs> So what have we achieved so far? Um, this is just kind of going back in the time when we started. It's kind of in line with what I just um, mentioned. But like I said, in 2020, we redefined the scope. Uh, we finalized a one pager to kind of introduce the topic. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? And we need everyone's input um, to start this project. Um, we 
agreed on a list of airport related entities in 2021. So we actually gathered input from different organizations, different airports on airport specific entities. Um, we took out all of the doubles, came up with one list and um, started linking it to IFC or mapping it to IFC. Um, that took a while. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of work. Um, but after we finished that list, we um, started looking into distributing the list. How are we supposed to gather input from more specialists in the field? Um, and that's how we created the, um, the surveys that are live today. And we started with a baggage handling survey, which we'll give you more detail, um, details on later on in this presentation. Um, and at the same time, we started uh, looking into the users of the Building Smart Data Dictionary and how are we supposed to use it. So that's mainly Maya, who will give more details about that. Um, in 2022, we, um, at the end of the year, we finished the baggage handling results um, and the survey closed. We gathered all of that input, went through all of it all, uh, all of the results, and uh, kind of looked at uh, what the correct mapping is. Did people agree with the names uh, that we proposed? Um, etc. Um, and yeah, today we actually added it to the Building Smart Data Dictionary, which is the update that we'll be giving later on today. So the Airport Entities Project. Um, why are we doing this? Uh, what is the challenge that airports are running into today? This slide is the same slide that we've presented for the last two and a half years, but I think it's a very clear slide. Um, the main challenge is, is that today there's no clear and consistent schema for airport specific objects, uh, making data interoperability difficult, um, and meaning that all of those different stakeholders that play a role throughout um, an asset lifecycle um, are, are, are using it differently. They're creating different, or using different entities. The building element proxy is the most famous one. Um, and so there was a lot of discussion between all of those different stakeholders, causing a lot of extra time, money, you guys know the drill. Um, and so we created the Airport Entities Project, where we're creating um, clear agreements within the airport community, um, allowing airports to work with only the necessary parts um, of the schema. Um, and so with that, we're hoping to kind of minimize those challenges um, and uh, really maximize the value of um, lifecycle management by taking out those redundancies and inconsistencies. So here's one of the old slides, which I actually really liked. When we looked at it, we were like, that's a good slide. So why are we doing the Airport Entities Project? Um, like I said, there's a lot of confusion about the entities, the properties, the quantities, and the enumerations that are being used within the aviation industry. Uh, there was a lot of discussion. Um, Vienna Airport, Schiphol Airport, Auckland Airport, but also Nako Royal Hoskone, um, who is uh, one of the design parties or uh, consulting uh, parties for airports, especially Schiphol Airport. Um, kept coming back to us as a client, hey, it's not working, we're not sure what to use. Um, and so we want to create those clear quantity takeoffs so everyone knows what they're supposed to deliver, when they're supposed to deliver it um, in a structured way. Um, and so with that, we're really looking uh, at aiming um, to speak the same language throughout the whole life cycle. Um, all of the different phases, which there's a lot of them as you guys know, um, there should be no more confusion about what a door is. Um, so that's that's really what we're trying to do with the airport entities project, obviously specifically for airport specific or objects. <clears throat> because I'm usually I speak so uh, not noisy that I got a special microphone today. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, the most important thing we want to um, achieve with these slides here is actually that. Um, um, we had a very complex environment in the airports and very specific equipment. Usually this is not common with other um, branches. So for that reason, actually, um, we have to classify things or we need to understand how to classify things. The interesting um, context of our work is usually um, the whole aviation standard or the whole, whole aviation industry standardization, which is done by EITA which is something like an overall context to help us to classify things actually. Um, the usually the, the software we use usually to produce these models actually 
um, doesn't help us to decide what is the right um, classification or what is the right declaration for elements. So for that reason, we need also something like a rule set or something like a catalog, um, which is the really perfect fitting declaration to describe something we use on the airfield, in the terminal, in package handling systems, and so on. And if um, actually um, all of these things got developed by us, and we more or less have a complete declaration catalog of things. But in the past, this was not possible. This was the need why we start working on that. Um, we, so if we got a model from different departments in the airport, usually they use also not the same declaration. So we have a huge, in, a huge amount of inconsistencies between models, even in the same airport. So this was one of the biggest, I think, objectives for us to start with that work, to make it really unique declarations, really, really unique for us inside the airport, but also in uh, between us and our uh, planners or deliverers we have outside of the airport. Um, one of the most important things, um, especially for us in asset management uh, um, departments, is usually to identify things, to filter things. Um, because we need to count things a lot of times. There's a call from the CEOs. They want to know how much doors we have with fire um, uh, um, fire uh, equipment or with um, motor drive or something like this. And you need to give them an answer inside three minutes or so. Otherwise, you have to go on. <laughs> and for that reason, it's really important for us as well to have really clear declarations. This works for the whole environment in an airport and makes it possible to declare things unique. Um, the problem here is actually that you need to have in mind that this, this is so much stuff that you need also to have a level of abstraction that it's getting not too complex, that everyone understands the same thing. So for that reason, this was also something we had in our procedure uh, always in mind that we have to keep it simple and not too complex. I think a lot of times we used at least one hour on Monday to, dis to discuss one declaration to make sure that this is really fitting. So for that reason, it took a while. But for that reason, also quality is better <laughs> about that. And uh, ah, it switched earlier here than there. Yeah, ah, OK. <laughs> ah, now I understand. OK. <laughs> so um, this is. Um, this was one of the most um, biggest issues for us, how to declare things and how to make them identifiable. Um, um, there are many activities on Vienna Airport, but also on Schriftfall Airport and on other airports um, to make sure that um, everyone in the airport identify things correctly. So we start working with um, QR codes um, to combine machine readable stuff with our declarations and so on. But the most important thing here is, again, you need it catalog of declarations which make it possible for everyone to choose the correct declaration and to understand the declaration in behind. And um, uh, we have another problem maybe in airports, but this is not specifically only a um, problem in airports, that there are so many different um, departments and they don't want to speak all the time with each other, that it's not easy to get all the stakeholders on board to make um, decisions what is what in a data structure. I think most prominent um, example here is package handling system. It seems to be the same situation in all of the airports, um, expect um, Auckland Airport. This was our chance that the departments who maintain and who operate package handling systems are not allowed or not willing to work with the other departments because they are so focused. This is the heart of the airport. They are so focused on their stuff. <laughs> That they don't want to exchange too much information with all of the others. So, but we need these declarations. And luckily, there are also airports which have not these barriers in between. And uh, we could involve them very strongly. This was um, um, uh, Auckland airports, especially. And they deliver us a lot of declarations we can't get from our own people. Not because they don't want, but also because they are not, they have not the time for that. <laughs> I think everyone noticed what's happened in summer last year and this year. That's, Package handling system uh, seems to be the most um, important point actually in airports. And with, when this thing is not working, everything else is not working in the airport. So for that reason, they don't have time for us. But yeah, we have an alternate solution for that. Um, the, the benefits we create um, with all of this um, work in the entities project is to get a really clear picture what is inside airports, how to declare these things, and to work with this stuff not only in our own data structure setup, to have a better um, handover from external partners who deliver us um, new models for new buildings, but also 
to provide um, planners who need to reconstruct um, parts of the airports um, with correct information and to get from them back again also correct uh, models or also drawings back again in our data structure setup. Actually, we in our today's work, um, we have to work a lot with proxy elements, with individual <laughs> declarations, and this is something um, deliver like NACO, who's delivered uh, information to many different airports, makes it very hard to deliver in a correct quality, and the preparation for that work is really, really immense. So for that reason, um, we can improve these procedures a lot with working with a common catalog, and um, working with a declaration which fits to the actually IFC4 um, specification, but also get prepared for IFC4.3, because there's something um, Ariska mentioned a little bit that we start working um, mapping extensions or addendums, or I forgot about what's the real, real word. In, in Rome, we learned that is the correct word, how to call it by now, addendums, I think. Um, so we, we created these addendums um, for airports to IFC4, and um, it seems out that there is a lot of stuff missing we need. Um, we try to use type declarations for stuff like that, but in many um, situations, um, there was not a fitting entity for that. And so at the end, it ends out that we use a lot of um, user-specific um, declarations or proxies again and so on. And then there was the fulfilled release of IFC 4.3 last year in spring or so, mm -hmm. the last really final release. And we start working um, to implement our declarations in IFC 4.3. And this was a complete new situation because um, this is so much more precise. Um, for example, in the package, package handling system, there is so much more declaration already existing that we don't need to fulfill gaps so much anymore, like in the IFC4 declarations. So this was a huge step for us. And um, for the, but we actually decided to um, cover up IFC4, but also IFC4.3, because by now you don't have BIM applications who support or which supports IFC4.3. So we need actually the four to, uh, IFC4 declarations, but we will be prepared by now. So it's a new step, actually, I've learned. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so in practice, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I think uh, this works. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, in practice, um, what we've done it was mentioned a little bit before as well. So we gathered input from different organizations. So we had the Auckland Airport. Um, we had objects from the China Aviation uh, University, Finavia Organization, NACO Royal Haskoning, Schiphol Airport, and uh, of course Vienna Airport. Um, and you can imagine that all these different organizations had um, a lot of objects, which most of them, of course, were um, the same, but they were uh, with different naming. So we spent a lot of time to actually combine the list uh, to remove all the duplicates to categorize them somehow in categories that made sense to us to work on them. Um, and then, of course, as Christoph mentioned, uh, we started with mapping it into IFC4 and then to IFC4.3. Um, we introduced uh, a lot of user-defined types, uh, a lot less after the use of IFC4.3. But still, we do have um, uh, user-defined types defined uh, in our list. And of course, we added images because we realized that while discussing about different objects, we needed them for better uh, interpretation. Uh, an example here is the check-in conveyor. Now, I think this um, the choice that we made has changed, but just to understand, um, we, uh, we saw in the IFC 4.3 that there is the IFC conveyor segment. Um, and then, of course, you have the different predefined types. So at the bottom, you can see the different lists. So when we, we say the user-defined one, this is what we mean. We chose the user-defined one, and then we created our own uh, name for that, type for that. Oh, thanks. Um, we have uh, created, we created a lot of surveys. Um, the first one was the baggage handling uh, systems survey. Um, we already, uh, it went live um, uh, two years ago. Uh, we got a lot of feedback. Uh, I will show you later on how much, how many, the numbers. Uh, but actually, the last um, one and a half year, we also created four more surveys. 
the airport uh, specific security systems and passenger control objects, navid and uh, meteorological equipment objects, civil airfields and terminal. Uh, they are live now, uh, so you can, um, if you have specialists, please uh, send them out. We need uh, their input. Uh, it's very important for us. Um, so about the uh, baggage handling system, the responses that we got were a lot, were 65. And now for the other surveys, we expect way more. Um, uh, we got them in different languages, which is quite of a challenge, to be honest. That's what we realized while... Um, checking the feedback we got because, of course, we got a lot of good feedback uh, in Spanish, Portuguese and Italian and French, which unfortunately, the people in the working group, are, we are not all talking um, all this Portuguese, for example, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but it's something that we are working on, of course. Uh, for now, we worked um, out most of these responses. Only a few of them we didn't understand, but they were all, uh, ag they all agreed, the ones that we did not understand, so that's fine. Um, and uh, what we have done is basically uh, that we um, uh, received all the feedback and we added the mapping to the IFC entities um, uh, between these uh, airport objects for the baggage handling system and uh, the IFC uh, 4.3 uh, version. Uh, throughout this process, we actually realized that there are a lot of challenges uh, that we need to face and we realized that we need to propose uh, properties. Um, an example here is the shoot parallel and the shoot spiral. Um, we had two different airport objects for these two different um, uh, airport objects, but we realized that it's better to create one uh, called shoot and, of course, create a property uh, called shoot type parallel or uh, spiral. We had similar um, examples uh, like this one. Like, for example, for the conveyor belt, we had conveyor belt merge, merging right, and this was one object for us, and merging left. But then, of course, you can also create one with a property for the direction. Uh, the same was for the curved conveyor belt clockwise, anticlockwise, uh, the inclined conveyor belt upwards, downwards. And um, uh, then we also saw that we can add, for example, the belt speed, uh, the slope, uh, some baggage dimensions, uh, whether the rolled bed is powered, true or false. So there are these sort of things that we realized throughout the, the, feed, the feedback, while checking the feedback that we received from the specialists. So the next uh, step for us is to look deeper and to discuss further with uh, these specialists on what exactly properties, which properties we want to create and add um, in the baggage handling system objects. For now, we only have, as I said before, uh, the object and the mapping to the IFC entity, um, if this is to a specific predefined type or a user-defined type. Um, another challenge is um, that we have also different types of baggage handling systems, uh, the individual carrier system and the conveyor. <laughs> so this is also something that we need to discuss with a specialist and check how we are going to uh, address this uh, inside BSDB. And uh, also, uh, there are objects that we haven't included them yet, but while checking um, models from specialists, we realized that they are not airport specific. That's why we didn't have them. But of course, they are still very important for the baggage handling systems. Uh, this is These are some of the examples, like the ladder, the stair, the pusher and the IECS uh, stacker. Um, for us, as it was mentioned before, it's very important to, um, to use the BSDD, the Building Smart Data Dictionary. Uh, as you all know, it's, it's a service from Building Smart International. Uh, it's the single point for all levels of agreements and standards, including relations and interconnections. And it provides a standardized uh, workflow to guarantee data quality, which is important for us. Um, of course, there are standards on different levels. Uh, you have international ones like the IATA standard that Christoph mentioned before. You have the national ones um, on a national level, like the NLSFB, which is the Dutch standard. And of course, company and project standards. Um, for us, it's, it's very important to be part of BSDD um, because, uh, next slide, please. Um, 
We want to connect the airport domain with the IFC standard. Um, we want to extend and reuse the IFC standard for the airport domain. Um, we want to create standardized exchange requirements for the airport domain. Uh, all the uh, you heard before from Christoph how important this is for us. And of course, the possibility to distribute the airport related connected standards. Uh, use the agreements and the standards on the airport domain for the classification and the enrichment of BIM files with airport specific objects. Um, and so for that reason, in 2021, uh, we um, created uh, an, our IFC airport domain um, inside BSDD. Uh, in 2021, at the end of the year, we um, added four airport objects as a pilot at that time. Um, it worked, so we were really happy because we could actually, for ourselves, first of all, understand the whole workflow, uh, why BSDD is important for us, but also to express to others, to our organizations, to our colleagues, and to the um, rest of the aviation industry world, uh, the importance of this project. Um, so this year, we have the results now in the test environment in the Building Smart Data Dictionary and soon also in the production. Uh, here you see the um, uh, 20, I think, um, um, uh, airport uh, entities, uh, objects, airport objects, uh, specific objects for baggage handling system. Uh, if you click on them in the test environment, you can check and you can see the IFC entity, the mapping. Uh, next year, the plan is uh, to work more into the properties and add them in the BSDD. And of course, to add more objects from the other um, surveys. Um, oh, okay. so we check this. Um, the, the, to, to combine all of these declarations, um, at first we start with a tool called Airtable. I think this was in, um, introduced by Carl. And um, because this was a very interesting way to work together on one sheet and to combine all of these, because we exchange at the beginning our data structure ex um, drafts only as Excel sheets and push them together and then we filter all the things we, um, everything which was proceeded and where we say, okay, we are, we have the opinion, this is the correct thing. We hand over to a final sheet there and so on. So this was the first workflow we worked with. Um, then later on, when we start working with different IFC mappings or declarations, it seems to be necessary to work in a more um, data structure driven machine. So we switched to a tool called BIMQ. This was also mentioned in the morning in the IDS workshop several times. And um, this BIMQ set or this BIMQ tool um, is a um, web database where you are able to create a data structure and produce several mappings to different IFC um, specifications, but also to um, software internal data structures. And at the end, you are able to um, deliver um, this to BIM applications, but also to several standards like IDS and so on. So this seems to us the perfect tool to work together in the development and um, to make sure that um, all of these things um, we produce get um, usable as fast as possible without any um, additional exchange or something like this. Um, the, on, the interesting thing as well is that um, a lot of um, checking tools already also get connected with this BIMQ tool. So we are also able to check um, already content which comes with an IFC file regarding to our specifications. And um, I think we prepared this last year for Montreal, but then I got sick from our room there and I can't present it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it still works. You can believe in us. And um, actually there are many different other tools um, available for that to hand over um, checking rules directly from BIMQ. So this seems to be a very important use for us already. Later on, if you have also properties, for sure there's also the possible to use IDS and use exactly the workflows which starts um, in the morning with the IDS workshops or in the next days as well and so on. So IDS is actually, I think, our objective to deliver everything there because then you can hand over this stuff here without having any other connection. Everything is working. Um, also to hand over these declarations to authoring tools. Maybe in future um, authoring tools also use IDS to hand over the data structure concepts. Could be possible. I think I've heard from Brixcuts last year in December, then we met them in a workshop. They think about to use directly an IDS file um, uh, to hand over a data structure concept in their BIM application. 
um, because they have not a need to describe an internal data structure and an external um, IFC data structure. Everything is the same in their software. We have here another situation when we work with Archicad or with Revit because there is a difference between internal data structure and IFC. So they need also the mapping information. But this is provided also in BIMQ. So actually we start to combine our data structure concept with a standard data structure setup from an Revit or Archicad and so on. But there will be the possibility to increase this much more. So this seems to us a perfect solution to deliver this usable as possible. Um, directly to BIM creators or to model creators. So, correct. And I need to, ah, yeah. perfect. <laughs> because pictures say more than words, mostly. Um, this is um, only a description about the things I explained already. So, inside BIMQ, we have several domains um, to declare the data structure. So, it starts with um, our five different um, domain model conceptions we created for package handling system, airport security systems, navates, the airfield stuff, and terminal. So, this is split in different domains there, or subdomains, because the airport domain is maybe the primary domain for that. And we created the already mentioned IFC4 and the IFC4.3 mapping. Internally, to be honest, we have also the mapping to Revit and to Archicad setup because it's the most used software in our context. And to test those things, we implement this already. So what's, what we can do by now is creating already an IDS file. But because we are not having properties already implemented, this is only an IDS file with declarations for the entities. But it's already in beginning. And we already have a try. This is still working. And another possibility we have is to hand over our declarations also directly to the BSDD because BIMQ is used in, in Austria and Germany as something like a pre-property server for governmental works. Um, there's already a BSDD write access uh, in preparation to hand over the declarations out, uh, from BIMQ directly inside BSDD. Just by now, we use a JSON file in between. Um, but this workflow is established because I think you were the first person who did this um, in 2021 with the JSON um, implementation. So we can trust actually on that workflow, but in future we will have here an API based uh, handover from our declarations inside BSDD. And I think this is quite important because there will be changes from time to time and um, making the handovers all the time with JSON maybe is not really effective. So if we have here an API based solution, we are able to uh, transmit only the changes. And inside BSDD, there is a revision for every declaration. So you can see, OK, this is the newest one. This is the last one from last December or something else, and so on. So you have the possibility um, to get or to distribute much faster our declarations. And in our mind, actually, there will be a much stronger um, interaction in future with the industry standard classification systems from IATA because aviation industry is extremely standardized. So I think these interactions will be work much and more very deeply um, together. So this update seems to get much more important for us. I think next slide is Ariska. All right. Uh, so what is next? Uh, I think a lot of uh, next steps have already been mentioned uh, throughout the slides. Um, but yeah, we finished uh, the baggage handling feedback. As Maya mentioned, at least the English translation <laughs> or the, the English feedback. Um, yeah, we, we got some results where people did. Um, I mean, I could tell that they did not agree because <laughs> that was pretty clear. Um, but their answer of what they would propose, yeah, we could not understand. So a next step would actually be to go, still go through those results as well, or the feedback, because we want to include everyone uh, for the baggage handling, um, because honestly, the three, four people that are sitting here are not baggage handling specialists. Um, so Mike, who's not here today, uh, did check with his colleagues within NACO to get some feedback, um, but um, we luckily had Carl. Carl is very, very knowledgeable uh, from Auckland Airport uh, to provide uh, to go through the results and let us know whether it's 
you know, remotely correct or that he's like, no, that, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, we kind of prioritized as well by the results. Like if we had a Van der Lande, which they are very, very specialized in baggage handling, we took them a little bit more serious than maybe just a BIM uh, modeler, uh, which we still included their input, very important. Uh, but if we had to make a decision which one uh, we would pick, we, we did pick Van der Lande just because of their special specialty. Um, we added, as Maya showed you, the baggage handling feedback to the uh, to the data dictionary, which is a very exciting next step. Um, and that's what we've really been working on these last couple of months. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it was a lot of work. Um, and then with the summer vacation, um, this is where we are today. Um, as Maya mentioned, we will be looking into the properties that she explained in some of the slides, um, maybe creating an, an airport property set as part of the uh, do airport domain um, or IFC airport domain in the Building Smart Data Dictionary. Um, there's still, people were also able to provide um, entities that might have been missing from the survey because we weren't sure if we were complete. So we have to inventorize all of those entities that might have um, still need to be added to uh, the data dictionary, inventorize those. And um, yeah, that would be a next step to, uh, to look into. Um, after we went live with the survey for baggage handling, we also got a lot of very valuable input from Heathrow Airport uh, in London, um, which we couldn't include in the survey. So we do still wanna look at what they sent us and um, see if we can still use some of that uh, to add to, uh, to the current results that we have. Um, and like I said, we are not a specialist, so we do still want to uh, see if we can approach uh, some of the baggage handling specialists. Um, he's not here today, but in Rome, we talked to Alessandro, uh, who I think is based in Switzerland, mm -hmm. but he's Italian. He's very specialized in um, baggage handling, so we want to set up a meeting with him, go through the results again, just to make sure we are really within the aviation industry um, are providing the right information uh, that everyone can agree on. Mm -hmm. Um, that's really the, the next big steps for the for the data dictionary. Um, we actually just had a meeting with Arthur as well because we are also looking into adding more definitions of the airport specific objects uh, to the building smart data dictionary. So when we're talking about a shoot, everyone in the aviation industry understands that we're talking about the same shoot. Um, I think that's very important. Um, we also want to add images, which Maya has in the previous summits uh, shown that you can add links to images in the building smart data dictionary. It's not really user friendly. You want to look or you want to click on on a concept and just see the image as mm -hmm. part of of your entity. So that's something that we want to discuss with uh, Building Smart as well, uh, and the possibilities of the Building Smart Data Dictionary in the future. Um, and at the same time, we're also really discussing the governance of the Building Smart Data Dictionary and the and the airport domain. So ownership, how to implement the Building Smart Data Dictionary with different software. Um, Maya mentioned the, some of the entities that uh, are not airport specific, but are very important for airports. So how are we going to deal with, with the ladder that she was showing you? Because mm -hmm. the ladder is not airport specific, very crucial for airports, um, but obviously can't really be part of an airport domain. So how do we deal with those entities within the Building Smart Data Dictionary? Um, and, I, and I think this is an extremely important question, actually, because by now, when we declare things in the BSDD, this starts to be serious. Um, so if we declare by now actually things which not really completely only belong to airports, this is something like a failure in the whole BSDD concept. Because actually in our domains, we declare only the things which belongs to the airport structure and which are exclusive there for the airports. And if there is someone else, for example, the building room, which needs to declare stairs and everything all around, which belongs to stairs and so on, we can refer to that, but we can't declare it by ourselves. So this is actually the basic question. So for that reason, also, we took um, um, a while longer to think about how to make it correctly. Um, because if you make now um, problems or if you now produce problems because we, we did it too fast and don't think about, then it's getting a problem later on. It's the same actually also with the product room we talk about a lot, that even there, there is the same problem that there are many things which could be um, already transmitted to the BSTD by now but they need to find out who is the first one who need to distribute it and then who can refer to that only to make it really correctly, actually. And it's the same situation here. Okay. And maybe there is something we can talk about also because by now we have um, declarations. Properties is the next step. But geometry is also an interesting topic because um, if you start actually designing or concept an, um, an terminal or something outside on the airfield, 
there is no geometry available from your BIM application which helps you because everything there is so unique that this stuff is not available in a BIM application. Even a check-in um, desk um, or even an um, um, X-ray scanner um, for your security control and so on. Nothing of these things is available by now in the BIM applications and it will not be there because it's too unique stuff. But um, we also had contact with people who are designing actually geometry for that, which is fitting to our declaration. But this will be another chapter, and chapter is the wrong word, another topic, I think, an extension we have to solve. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, you kind of caught, caught me off guard there, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> to finish off the list, maybe the last one should have been next after the governance of the BSCD. How does this translate back to the entire built environment? And I see that built should have been with a, should have been with a T. Um, just because um, the working group is quite small. We have Vienna Airport, Schiphol Airport, Auckland Airport, and NACO. And we have uh, more people involved within the steering committee. But obviously, we want more people to get involved with this project. Um, and so we have to be able to translate this back to the entire build environment to really explain the value um, of this project uh, and how it can actually uh, benefit other airports around the world and letting them know that their input is just as important as just the people that are sitting here. Um, so with the next point then being, we need more people. Uh, we, we want more input. We want more collaboration. Uh, and so one of the things that... Um, we did realize is that the US has an airport uh, chapter uh, within the United States. Um, we've been in contact with them um, and we will actually have a meeting with them in a month um, because they are really looking into collaborating more with the international um, building smart international airport uh, domain. Uh, so I had uh, the privilege of going to Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. I met with Cindy Baldwin from the US chapter and um, the next step is really to combine the, uh, the US chapter with the international chapter. So that, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least, we're always looking for funding. Again, we're doing this voluntarily. Um, we would like this project to move a little bit faster than what it's doing now, but we can't do that without funding. So that's another thing that we're hopefully um, able to realize. So again, what do we need? <laughs> kind of repeating myself here, other airports to, to get involved, um, other asset owners because of what Christoph was saying, the, over, the, the entities that are not just airport specific, but are very important for airports. Um, so for example, the collaboration with the building uh, domain, the infrastructure domain, um, railway domain, because airports usually also have railways uh, where there's overlap with entities. So we're looking into that as well. Uh, we would like more designers, engineers, and contractors to get involved. Um, software vendors obviously are very, very important in order to, to make this happen in the long run. Um, and um, we haven't really looked into it too much yet, but I think manufacturers are also going to play a very important role in the future. So with that, um, just finishing up, the future vision of the airport domain is uh, further develop information standardization. Uh, again, we really want to position the, uh, the Building Smart uh, Airport, uh, this should say domain, did it say domain up there? Nope, <laughs> can't call it a room anymore. The airport domain within the aviation industry, so really showing the value uh, of the work that's being done um, within, the, within the airport room to the other um, airports. Uh, we want to connect to international aviation organizations like IATA, get them more involved because they are very uh, standardized and it would be nice to collaborate on that and include that within the developments that we are looking into. Um, and last but not least, I think we made a good step, first step in, in Rome, uh, connect and collaborate with other rooms. We had a joint session with the infra room and the railway room in Rome, um, ended up being very popular because a lot of people were there, a lot of very good discussion. <laughs> Uh, on how to uh, deal, for example, with those entities that are not airport specific, but have overlap with the other domains and really looking at ownership. Uh, how do you handle it within a BIM model? Uh, do we have one BIM model, several BIM models? How do you handle those entities then? Um, but also looking at the product room for the templates. I think it was presented uh, in, in the um, session this morning, the mm -hmm. fit for, or the, are you fit for 55 or something? Um, and the building room, technical room, et cetera. So they are very important uh, stakeholders in, in the next steps for, for, the, build, for the airport uh, domain. And with that, um, I am finishing up. Are there any questions? Very basic question. Um, um, 
so you said uh, initially you were uh, uh, planning to change the IFC schema for IFC 4 and IFC 4x3. Uh, now it's all being done in BSDD. Um, for 4x3, you mentioned there are quite a lot more entities that you can use, but for 4, there aren't. Uh, does that mean that you're using an IFC building element proxy for those, or are there other entities? Usually we use user-defined types, much more user-defined types um, inside IFC 4. So we, we already identify usually the correct entities, or more or less correct entities. And um, I think if you're um, familiar with the concept of um, abstract entities and not abstract entities inside the IFC scheme, inside IFC four declarations, you, we use usually abstract entities and work with a user-defined um, user type declaration. Uh, inside IFC 4.3, we have so much not abstract entities, long word, <laughs> so we can use a specific type declaration already, which is, ex is existing there. So this is actually how it was done from our side. So for that reason, the type declaration or the, the, the IFC mapping inside IFC 4 is much more much more generic uh, than in our IFC 4.3 um, declaration. But there is no other way how to do it. But I have no clue when we have IFC 4.3 um, IFC translators in our BIM applications to start work with that. So maybe in ASBIM we get it soon because of the infrastructure activities from your side. But I have no clue in, in typical buildings, uh, typical BIM applications for buildings, I have no clue when they deliver us IFC 4.3. So we will work with that IFC 4 declaration at least the next five years, I think. Any other questions? No? Okay. They think Thank about you. the founding amount. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. Yeah.